Succession is my favorite show of all time. It's four perfect seasons, 39 brilliant episodes of television, masterfully crafted by Jesse Armstrong and his team. In an era of squeezing IP for all that it's worth, Succession was good and it was gone, leaving the audience desperately craving more, which, in my opinion, is the best position to put your audience in. There's no doubt that Succession will age like fine wine. It probably has not even been seen by the majority of people who will eventually be fans. It's ahead of its time and will surely be rediscovered over and over again by different generations moving forward. I believe Succession both followed in the footsteps of other iconic shows while also paving their own way and creating a blueprint for future showrunners to follow in their own aspirations towards creating iconic television. So how did they do it? I don't think I've ever seen better casting of an ensemble than there was in Succession for a number of different reasons. Every single actor seems they were born to play this character, which is likely the result of great care taken in casting, directing from Jesse Armstrong and the team, as well as the space and trust these actors were given with their characters. All of the casting decisions were pristine, some of my favorites being Matthew McFadden as Tom Wamsgans, Sarah Snook as Siobhan Roy, J. Smith Cameron as Jerry, Kieran Culkin as Roman Roy, Jeremy Strong as Kendall Roy, all the way to characters like Arian Moyed as Stewie, Peter Friedman as Frank, David Rash as Carl, so many more. There's so many to name, it's, it's actually absurd. But it shows how much thought the team put into these collaborations. Even someone who was in the episode for a mere seconds feels perfectly in place. There are no A-listers in this cast, or really, at least there weren't when it first began. And in an age where big names almost always trump the fit for a role, it's so refreshing to see these artists that were selected for this project work. Of course, there's a value to the extra degree of believability that these characters bring to the show because the actors that played them weren't household names to begin with, but I do believe what's most important is that Jesse Armstrong and the team sent a direct and consistent message that the story, the characters, and the work came before anything else. Even in the later seasons when characters like Mattson, Menken, Jimenez, real monster characters, CEOs, presidential candidates, were to be casted, the highest Jesse and the team dipped their hand into the pot for was Alexander Skarsgård, who sure is a huge name, but he's not a Marvel superhero or someone who took away from the story at all. He added massive amounts to it. And part of the reason he was cast was probably because of his foreign descent aligning with Succession's needs for the project, not because it'd be awesome for Alexander Skarsgård to be in this, like I've seen in other shows as seasons move along, just adding people to the ensemble sort of for the heck of it. To further hammer that point home, how many big actors do you think would kill for the role of Jared Menken for it to be given to a strong actor that again isn't a household name? Consistently, the decision was made that this was about succession, Jesse Armstrong's vision, not about how much popularity the show could conjure. I think these decisions all culminated into what seemed like an egoless dream of collaboration that everyone enjoyed. Of course, there was everything with Jeremy Strong, the articles that came out, which I still think have been taken far out of context, but they probably add a level of iconism to the show themselves. All in all, Succession is a story about family, and the care taken to getting the right people in the room to show the audience the inner workings of this fictional family was the strong base that everything else worked off of. I think Succession could be the best show ever written from a dialogue standpoint. We're all just little nudie turtles. Sometimes I think I'll never truly understand Dad until I shit outside. Great dialogue still needs great acting, and it was beautiful to see the collaboration between what was said and what was left unsaid, how it affected and didn't affect different characters. What was really, really strong in Succession was the character stuttering, the fuck-offs, the raunchy but sophisticated energy of these characters' delivery. That combined with the handheld, shaky, unpredictable filming nature of the show made it seem beyond authentic. There was less than zero room between what a character truly felt and how they were speaking, and I believe that's a huge testament to the freedom the cast was given with these characters and their interpretations of the text. In a time where dialogue seems to be getting more robotic, obvious, and stale, to the point where AI can genuinely compete with most Hollywood movies, Succession is not just a breath of fresh air, it's some of the highest quality oxygen we have. 
Some of the funniest, most quotable lines in television history are and will continue to be from Succession as more people watch it. Among my favorites that I actively use with my friends and family on a very frequent basis, probably uh, too much, they would say, are... Hi. Oh, what is that? Date rape by Calvin Klein? Yeah, you wish. You wish? Are there Easter eggs in there you didn't get the first time? <laughs> would you kiss me? What? Would you kiss you? If I asked you to. What, I if kiss I told you? you to? You mean... Talk about the big shit? I'm looking for pussy like a fucking techno Gatsby. Big shoes. Big, big shoes. <laughs> big, big shoes. Big, big shoes. And that's all to say, it was few and far between that I felt like Succession was forcing lines or characters were just saying good dialogue to hear themselves say it. Actually, that did happen a few times where characters themselves talked just to be heard. Little Lord Fuckleroy has left the call. But it was hilarious. But I never felt like the writers were writing just to hear their lines, said they were constructing a linear storyline with authentic statements from characters that just happened to be hilarious. These writers were so respectful of their own work, I can't imagine the comedy that was left on that cutting room floor. I pray to God someone saved it. They also hit the nail on the head with exposition. The show is not a mystery or a thriller, but somehow they managed to make IPOs and board meetings feel like that, the peak of drama. We as the audience were never spoon-fed. A lot of times we found out things too late, along with the characters, and we were forced to keep it moving just as they were, planning the next move. This is a spoiler for the last episode, but I, I was genuinely shocked at my own response to how things unfolded. I fell into the show's trap getting so caught up and finally wanting to see Kendall Roy win that I missed the forest for the trees. It actually took me a few days and a rewatch to appreciate the brilliance of the decision making in the final episode. And that's the beauty, Succession loved their audience but was indifferent to how they made them feel. They, they sent the message that the vision was the vision and if you didn't agree, oh well. I recently had my eyes open to how important timing is for a show in terms of pop culture and fame. I read an article recently about how Breaking Bad struck nerves with so many people, not only because it was incredible television, but also because of how slighted Americans felt by their country after the financial crisis around the same time that Breaking Bad came out. In that case, Walter White, as the anti-hero, got a lot of empathy because of the actual state of the country. People loved the story of a middle class or rising to wealth, really no matter the means necessary. The same can be said about Mad Men, Sopranos, Stranger Things, which fed off the nostalgia of periods in the 1900s that were coming back into style or were missed dearly. What's crazy about Succession is how much it is a commentary of where we are now as a nation, but also where we're headed. As time continues to pass, I see Succession becoming more and more relevant as we see systems, corporations, and previously perceived infallible entities in the U.S. and worldwide consistently fall short of public approval, and in some cases be flat-out embarrassments, Succession's content will ring even truer. The show lends a first-hand view to many contributing factors to how we arrived where we are as a society, and it will show signs of why we continue to go down the path that we do. One of those reasons being that, at the end of the day, we are all humans and incompetence is in our blood. The people at the top of society are no different than anyone else, and it's our idolizing of those at the top that truly hurts us and makes us vulnerable. It must be mentioned that anytime you gamify the experience for an audience, they're gonna eat it up. I mean, we saw this with Game of Thrones particularly, a large ensemble of characters duking it out for one spot, sports books taking bets on which character will end up on top, fantasy leagues and block pools created, drinking games, and no shortage of predictions to be had. And this is the fun of drama, this is why we love it so much, this is why we can't get enough. Even when this is done well, though, we know that it's not a given that the show will stick to landing. I mean, look at Game of Thrones. But Succession followed its vision through to the absolute end and did stick that landing, which made it even more impressive.
And finally, I've kind of teased this aspect the whole video, but I truly think what makes Succession an absolute gold mine is that you could maintain and eat the rich and eat with the rich attitude during the entire show. Succession allowed the viewer to be a fly on the wall of the lifestyles of the disgustingly wealthy and famous, while also showing their flawed existences and actions. In an age where celebrities and billionaires continue to dominate the public spectrum, showing really only their strengths, how refreshing was it to see these characters believably fuck up over and over and over again? Succession reminds us that it's not all that meets the eye that wealth and fame end up really solving nothing. In fact, they can be a negative enabler most of the time. I mean, take Kendall Roy, who anytime he was excommunicated from the company, had the means to hire his own team, take on a new venture, and distract himself with that which only his lifestyle and inheritance could provide him with. One of the main consistencies with the succession is Kendall's hard falls, yet he continues to find himself in a position of power. The same goes with Roman and Shiv, two deeply, deeply wounded children that are able to move through life with power as their North Star because of their father. As Marsha put it, He made you a playground, and you think it's the whole world? Well, va te faire foutre. Go out and see how you like it. Fuck off. The show conveyed that perhaps the worst curse is wealth, fame, and success is that you didn't work for the prize without the journey, the silver platter. In the end, none of the characters are happy because everyone let their greed take over. And of course, this sounds so cliche and ridiculous to say aloud, but it's the honest truth. Money solves problems. It's silly to think that it doesn't. But I do find it to be the utmost truth that money is not a solution for the truly important things in life. Money, fame, status can only make someone seem confident, happy, fulfilled, and successful, but none of that matters if the person cannot achieve those and feel that way without money, fame, and status's presence in their lives. And as much as we can ridicule these characters and find catharsis through their shortcomings, we the audience are always there to pick them up, root for them every chance we get right as they fall. Succession humanized billionaires in the most brilliant way. You never boo-hoo about these characters because you know they'll get out of their current triviality. However, you can feel deep sadness for how their life has turned out because they are so broken. We all, whether we admit it or not, want to live a life of luxury. And we all, whether we admit it or not, do hold some resentment towards those who are above us, those at the top of society. Succession allowed us to do both of those at the same time in a way that didn't pander to the audience either. It's actually brilliant how they managed to accomplish it. And while I know I said this last segment was the final one, something that really contributed to Succession's iconism that cannot be overlooked is the magnificent score by Nicholas Bertel.